You ever get the feeling you're being watched? <laughs> In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Wyoming state capital of Cheyenne. Let's begin with a bird's eye view map of Cheyenne from 1882. Um, I think we really need to take into consideration the population of this location. Um, we have a census beginning in 1870 of 1400 people. Um, 1880 we're up to 3400 people. So right around this time period here, let's, let's give it another 600 people, we'll say about 4000 people living in this location in a very early time period and, and you can see the types of buildings already in existence at that time multi-storied you can see the, the decorative aspects this is just a drawing I know um, but still not really uh, not really hiding that from from us the seekers of truth you can even get a, a sense of some of the uh, buildings from the time and we have the Opera House and we have the Cheyenne Club and the Courthouse, you'll see all of those. You also have a public school here, one I did not find, so we'll take a good look at it now and we can recognize even at this early time period you can see the basement windows along the bottom of this drawing and we've got some cowboy action going on for us because that's what fits the narrative. And most of what you're going to see in this video coming from that time period 1910 or before 1910 we have a population of 11,000 um, actually a drop from 1900 which was 14,000 and again we have an early depiction here um, from a of a built-out city not really expecting uh, the uh, low population numbers from what we're seeing here even modern day shy and having 60,000 people so although it's the state capital and the largest city in Wyoming uh, not a lot of people living there. But at this early time period we have buildings like this. We have all the brick with the fancy facades and the arched windows. So we're ticking all the boxes of the old world investigation that we like to do on this channel. Uh, you can see here as well the stonework, the column work. There you have the train station in the background. We'll take a closer look at it as we move forward. The Inter-Ocean Hotel. Again, the arched windows. So, if this is coming from the horse and buggy period where there's only really a handful of thousand people living here, um, who's building these uh, and uh, and why in such a manner? Right? We have to ask these questions. Why are we building like this? Here we're getting a, looking like a drawing actually here in the foreground, especially the horse. Sometimes hard to tell the difference between a photograph and a drawing. But we have a horse drawn streetcar. Part of the early narrative has to do with uh, the street and trolley cars that originally were all, the whole system was designed to be pulled by horse and then all of a sudden electricity came about and uh, they were able to transfer it all over. So again here we see the horse drawn trolley car. Poor horses had to follow the, the tracks, they weren't allowed to freewheel and go, or go as they please or cross the street or any of that type of stuff. So it seems a really silly part of the uh, historical narrative. Here we have a, a residential section, some beautiful residential streets in um, Cheyenne, uh, having a lot of that old red brick, large stone look. A nice street scene for you here. Early period, some old automobiles, um, first couple decades of the 20th century, I'd suggest. We also have a streetcar here nothing attached to it as far as electricity goes just a faint view of the track so that's interesting as well what's uh, what's making that one move here we have what has been turned into a modern-day brewery not sure 
um, what it was originally, but they're saying it was erected in 1900. Well, thanks, thanks for putting that on the front of the building. Now we know. No mystery solved. But I'm telling you, this is looking quite old. And of course, no shortage of churches. I like to put them in there. Bank buildings looking fairly plain, but I like to add these into my investigations because um, you still get a lot of the detailing and the uh, old world um, features. Now we have the Fort D.A. Russell nearby, so I've added a few structures from that as well. Here we have the Riding Hall, looking very brick-like. I'm not sure why you'd need to build a riding hall out of brick, especially with such a low population. But it wasn't just a riding hall that was made out of brick, it was also the hospital at the fort itself. Interesting look here with the circular windows built into the slope of the roof. Interesting uh, half circle dormers and basement windows. A lot of work, a large, large volume of work for such a small population. Another stone church. We have the Eagles Airy. Not sure exactly what that means. If that has to do with an Eagles Club. Um, but notice 1909. I remember the demographics for that time period. 1909, we were about 10,000 people living there. So pretty much everything you're seeing here, very low population. Here is our typical view of what we're expected to believe uh, the continent looked like before um, the European settlers came over. Uh, I have problems with that narrative, of course, it doesn't really fit with this research. I think a lot of this is theatrics, um, and a lot of that has been staged for our uh, for the purposes of our historical narrative. You get the Cowboys and Indians narrative and Hollywood pushing that, so uh, I don't trust it. Here's the headquarters of that fort. Again, you, why, why are you building in such a manner? Um, when when the, you tell me it's a fort, typically I'm thinking it's uh, something that was built somewhat temporarily. Uh, these are very, uh, very permanent looking buildings with foundations that go into the ground. A lot of the roof lines may be played with a little bit too here, hard to tell. Again, uh, what's the difference between the drawing and a photograph from this time period? Hard to tell. An old high school probably has been scaled down on the roof here. But Red Brecker. Here we have an old hospital. And remember, again, we're under we're really under 10,000 people for for the population of this uh, this location. A Veterans Administration building. So they were able to build about one, two, three, four stories with these columns um, in Wyoming, apparently. And of course they had a Carnegie Library. The Carnegie Library had a basement. And it was demolished in 1971. And I have read stories that this was quite a spectacular structure on the interior. And of course it had to be done away with. Absurd. And if you didn't think there were going to be castles in Cheyenne, Wyoming, you'd be wrong. We have the Castle Dare. Um, torn down in the 60s, as you do. But built in the 1880s. Remember, 1880s a time period of about three, four thousand people living here and they must have had enough people and skill to build such a structure. Either that or you have to question the narrative. The Kiri Mansion? Siri Mansion? I hope I have that right. Um, again, torn down in that same time period as the castle we just looked at. Built in the same time period as the castle as well, 1880s. You're getting a real good look at the, the tech on the roof here. The ridge line, fences, ether fences. Um, some tech going on here as well. multi story multi-use, different materials in use here. Um, basement windows, 1880s, Wyoming. Only a handful of thousand people. And they're building structures like this. 
but not to be outdone, we have a high school. Um, from this postcard is from 1907, so 1907, less than 15,000 people living in Wyoming. But when it came time to build the high school, they decided to make it look like a state capital or a courthouse, apparently, as you would. A bit of that Richardsonian look, of course, which uh, you'll see in a lot of these old buildings. So. You see the basement as well, so excavation needed. Shovels, I suppose. Shovels and manpower, where's the manpower coming from? Where's the time coming from? Here you also get a good look at the chimneys with the caps on them. The semicircle caps. Um, some have theorized that uh, the fireplaces um, of the old world actually harnessing the ether of the atmosphere, um, using that to power and heat these buildings not necessarily a fireplace for burning um, combustibles so interesting uh, look that's for sure circular porthole on the, the tower here absolutely ridiculous why a very small t city in Wyoming would build a high school like this you got a question that narrative and here we have a bike race but you get the idea, look in the background, all these buildings jammed up really close to each other, um, all having the ornate decorations. Really a lot of work to build this type of complex here. So it's certainly not allowing for it in our historical narrative, all of this. Giving you another view of uh, the texture of these buildings. And you really do have to ask like, who, who was doing this at that time in Cheyenne, who had the ability and the skill. Eighteen eighty-three, yeah, three thousand, four thousand people living there. I believe cattle a large part of this uh, region, and of course they have the trade station, which we will get to. And we saw the Cheyenne Club in the initial uh, map. Here you're getting a look at it. Again, you have these basement windows. Hard to tell what the material is. Very hazy. I think we've got some block work down here. Uh, there's the fence or gate work on the uh, ridges of the roof. So, old world structure. Nice street scene for you. you but you do get a little bit of idea here. You get some of the tech here. You got a flagpole without a flag, I guess, or some sort of tech device, it's up to you. Um, the street's looking very muddy, but you see the tracks running through. So why on earth are they putting tracks in this small city in Wyoming? And who's putting them in? Like, is the anticipation that this is going to be the, the major mode of travel, and then, uh, and then the whole thing just gets uh, nixed with the automobile? It's a very strange part of the narrative, it's definitely one that's worth a closer look. Okay, we have a hotel here, and you can see again, what, looking maybe like a lower door here. And then you have the whole sewer system well intact as well, so that's interesting. And of course, ornate decorations up top, very sort of difficult to make out, but you get the idea. Uh, Cheyenne had a millionaire's row, much like many of the big cities had. Um, here are a few examples of the houses that were constructed in that very early time period. Now you have to keep in mind, these are being built at that time. The other structures I'm showing you are being built at that time. How many people in the construction industry are said to have uh, been employed here at that time period to, to make all this happen? And you know, at what point does the, does the story fall flat on its face for you? I think I encourage you to, to question all of that. A couple street scenes here. Knights of Pythias block. Interesting. One of your secret society types. Not the only one. Kent's block. All having this ornate. Um, Eve's line, I suppose you could say. 
All right, we have a stock growers bank done in a bit of that uh, what Greco-Roman styling, I suppose, with the columns. More columns, city and county building. Of course, a more modern picture. So I'm not sure exactly when that went up. Elks Club, more columns. Quite, quite the building actually for an Elks Club in this small location. You'd think a one or two story smaller structure would suffice, maybe with an open hall area. Uh, this is quite large, I would suggest. And then this is giving you a good view of the brick or um, texturing and the detailing that goes on on a lot of these street scenes here in Cheyenne. So certainly not your uh, Cowboys and Indians narrative uh, as far as the architecture goes. There's so much more to the story. That alone should get you thinking. As well as this. This would be General Russell. We saw some structures from the fort there. He's got a cold hand, so he's keeping it warm. If you know what that means, then, then you know. Now this one is a real doozy. Not far from Cheyenne on the outskirts of town, we have the Granite Springs Dam. Uh, take a look at the megalithic block work here. This one really kind of threw me for a loop. I couldn't believe I found it there. Uh, that's This is incredible structure. And you have, of course, the modern concrete along the top, but this is looking very, very old. Almost blended together here as well. So uh, I don't. I, look, I looked at it, couldn't find much of an explanation for any of this. It's a bit of a ghost story. On, on, online buried surprised I found that picture all right the Plains Hotel looking kind of plain right not much why, why am I showing this maybe you got a little bit of this let's look at the inside Plains Hotel turn of the century Cheyenne interior looking like this pretty detailed I would say for for again a, a city of what 10,000 people who's doing the finish work here are they trading in experts, skilled tradesmen from, from outside of town to get all this done? Well, we know that this type of work is going on everywhere, so they'd be in high demand at the time. And another shot from up above on the mezzanine. You can see some, some glass skylight situation going on here. The Plains Hotel, not really so plain, is it? All right, the Edelman home. And you're doing this just because you can, I suppose. Also, you have these little short walls, brick-lined yards with the uh, metal fencing going on here. A lot more going on here than it than meets the eye, if you look a little closer. Here again, we see the county courthouse that we saw in the first uh, bird's eye view. Uh, 1882, very early, early on in the narrative. Um, yeah. Capitol Avenue... Theater. So all I could really find on this one. You can see the front here, and then the interior of that theater. Again, very early time period. Why on earth, with only a couple thousand people living here, are you building theaters along with state capitals and high schools and mansions? Uh, and you're putting in rail lines for the streetcars, and you only have a couple thousand people. Um, yeah, getting my drift. Doesn't add up. Okay, here we have the Masonic Hall. Let's see there, symbolism going on in arch windows. And, I mean, spectacular. You can tell it's an old world structure. Roof looking pretty plain, and, and the reason for that is because it wasn't always plain. It looked a little bit more like this, if that's the same structure. Hmm. What do you think? Yeah, it is. It is. You can see this detailing here. But of course, there was much more going on on the roof. Uh, you can see this very, very odd looking dormer roof, sort of what, front finials, I suppose. Uh, not just decorative, I suggest. Of course, they had to be done away with. It's a very interesting photograph. Very early time period. Who built that in such an early time period? Absolutely absurd. Here we have a hospital with a basement. Uh, you had to have an opera house 
It only had a couple thousand people. You had a couple theaters. You also had an opera house. I mean, you're building structures that can almost uh, house the entire town. And you're building multiple structures like that. It, it gets absurd after a while, doesn't it? Beautiful building. This roof here looking, reminding me, I'm sure there's multiple colors in here reminding me of um, a lot of other stylings I've seen in places like Milwaukee, Prague. Very interesting looking roof line. This is from 1913. Uh, again, 1913, we had a population dip in the first decade of the 20th century. So 1913, really less than 12,000 people, maybe. Mm -hmm. looking, looking pretty... Uh, Pretty built out. Post office and courthouse. That's another thing too. With this dip in population at that time period, you have no no slowing down of development. You just have these buildings continuing to show up. Here we have the convent of the Holy Child Jesus in Cheyenne. Hmm. What do you think? Nice looking mansard roof there with the curve. There are some skilled hands involved with this one. We also have a classic feature of the old world where the uh, front entry is on the elevated from the ground level and you have this uh, lower level along the bottom here. Convent of the Holy Jesus. And sticking with the that Catholic theme, we have St. Mary's Cathedral bit grainy. I'm quite certain that there would have been a spire or dome. Um, probably some sort of uh, some peak coming from the top of there. Here we are looking at it modern day and you get a sense of the age and quality of construction. Standing quite firm and strong so many years later. But if you weren't sure they have a date for you. 1907 uh, this apparently was put up. This looking like an afterthought. Like a modification as you do. And on the inside of course they had a pipe organ. Uh, quite a spectacular pipe organ. So Cheyenne, Wyoming ticking all the boxes of the old world. Evidence of the old world. Evidence of a deception. Um, there's much more to the story than we've been told. St. John's Hospital. Interesting. A little cupola in the middle there. That's a unique shape. All right, we get to it at last, the uh, the building I intro this video with, the State Capitol Building. Here we have an old um, photograph of it. Apparently the construction of this capital began before Wyoming, Wyoming even gained statehood. So we have a building time of 1886 to 1890 when this thing was going up. But remember the population at the time, um, 1886 to 1890, uh, 10,000 on the high side really. Um, I remember all the other structures I've shown you that were going up at the time, uh, but they had the manpower and ability to put this baby up at this location. What do you think? Quite the structure. Quite the structure. And they will tell you that w different wings were added in the 19 teens, which doesn't help the story because the 19 teens, the population doesn't really increase much from that early time period. So it's still doesn't add up. As far as I'm concerned, here we have a shot from the inside. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? A lot going on in such a massive structure for such a small city. This gives you a real idea of what we're looking at here. This looks like it could be anywhere that has a state capital or a similar style of building. Um, you can see here the capitals for the columns looking very, very similar to many of the other ones. The dental moldings, columns up on the tower, and of course the dome, which we are told was originally copper, but they put gold leaf on it. And they've applied gold leaf to it several times as well. I don't know. And if you have any doubt that this was being built at that time, here's a construction photo for you. 
notice that these guys look like drawings and everything's hazy and hard to trust and I don't think so and here that they have the big block I guess on the green they're gonna they're gonna ease it into place there's a construction photo so if you had seeds of doubt have them no longer and this is the video I or this is the photo I began the video with spectacular spectacular and let's look up to the underside of the dome now really wow symmetry the word symmetry comes up so often in this old world research all right let's move along we're getting to the end of the file here very close we have the Heinz building threw it in there because you know it looks very similar to many of the other ones we don't know what the inside looks like we have the Tivoli theater Tivoli theater now this is interesting because you can see here we have a lower entry and I have another photo of a oh, modern-day photo of the Tivoli theater and there's no trace at all of that lower entry um, let's go back you can just see the tops of these right so that's obviously been filled in and, uh, and nixed from the modern day but it's uh, in its own right a really obvious old world structure you can even see the brickwork back here looking very old and there's obviously been a demolition there but this is uh, screaming at your old world corner entry street entry the columns with the capitals in there it's just yeah old world beautiful structure Tivoli theater all right we're gonna finish with the Union Station train station uh, looking like something out of a fairy tale really when you look at the tower the texture of it looking and feeling very very old um, let's let's go to a color photo this maybe gives you a better idea looking like this is probably from the 50s 60s somewhere in there but it, you can get a sense of the, uh, the stature of this and the, the texture of it again in that Richardsonian Romanesque styling um, of course we're told that style was just catching on like wildfire at that time and we have another scene of the railway and just feeling feeling very old even for this early time period um, does not look or feel like this has been um, recently built but if you have any doubt, would they do provide a construction photograph for you of the train station? I don't know if you can see here, looking like we have a roof line that's been scrubbed out, possibly, and blended in with this white background. We also have some very, very, I think a very poor drawing of some stick framing. And of course the workers like to sit in the oddest spots and as we zoom in you can see pixelation around these little figures here. So I think we got some fakery going on. But I could be wrong. Maybe uh, I'm just not an expert. It doesn't feel right. I think this is all. These construction photos are all meant to throw you off the scent. Final photo we're going to finish here with the Warren Emporium. We did see hints of this in previous photographs um, and postcards. Really amazing structure, early time period. 1884 was a, was an early version of an indoor shopping mall. Occupied 23,000 square feet, housing 24 stores in 1884. Remember the population of Cheyenne in 1884? 4,000 people, let's say. Um, ridiculous the building was raised in the 20s to make way for a railway depot blah 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 the building was erased all we have is a drawing now anyway that would be Cheyenne Wyoming I hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching